Welcome back to Switch to Linux. So on today's video, we're going to just do a quick walkthrough on Linux Mint Cinnamon, how to do some menu configuration and just kind of make the system a little bit more of your own. Uh, these are pretty simple things, but uh, I just wanted to get a little bit of more configuration, simple type videos in here, uh, just basically how to get some setup items going. So without any further ado, um, we are going to transition over to Linux Mint 18. Um, and this is running on a virtual box. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to show you that uh, down here in the panel we have the menu and if you open up your menu there's um, all of your different categories, all of your different uh, programs here and what we're going to walk through is how to change the icons, how to change the icons for the whole set, the whole system and then we're going to talk about how you, if you want to change just a single icon in here without changing all of them, how you can manage that. So one of the things, we're also going to change the icon of the panel, and I'm just going to walk you through um, all these different settings. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm actually going to increase the size of the panel so you can easily see what I'm doing down here. And the uh, best way to do this is if you right click, you can come up to Panel Settings. And then inside of the panel settings, you can use a customized panel size. So I'm going to toggle this button and then here you can drag and drop your panel to an appropriate size. So I'm going to use a little bit bigger of a panel and then you want to select this option here to allow the text and the icons to scale. Otherwise we still have pretty small items here but we have a big tall panel. And I think that this is a, a little bit better system. Now there is another way that you can adjust all of the fonts in the system so that everything is a little bit bigger. We can do that as well. And if you want to do that, you can just click back and go into the, your font settings here. So there I just made the panel a little bit larger. And what we are going to do now is you can get to this by right clicking the menu and pushing the configure. Or if you are in the main settings, oh, my mouse has been triggering uh, a double click every now and again. I need to look at it. Come up into your main system settings. And these settings are inside of the applets under the preferences. And this is the menu. So you can come over here, click on menu, and then push the configure button. So this takes us to the same, same location. So the first thing is you might want to change the text or the icon on the menu itself. And so the best way to do that is the text just simply says text. So I can completely leave it blank, in which case we are just left with a menu item. Or I can give it some title. So I can do whatever I, I really want inside of that. So we're actually going to take it completely off. And I went online and I downloaded um, some, some icons. So I downloaded an old retro Apple icon and a couple neat Windows looking icons. You could do this anything. Now you do want to make sure that you have some transparent ping icons. Otherwise it's going to mess with the color scheme and the gradients on the panel. And so I just went on online and grabbed, uh, grabbed a few different icons and I put them under this custom menu folder in my home. I'm going to hide my system folders. So I just came under my main home dot folder here and I put custom menu. And what I did is I downloaded several, uh, several uh, files here. Uh, one of these is the old classic Apple logo. And all these dots here, uh, the squares rather, will actually mean that uh, this is, is indeed giving me a transparent ping file. Um, this one's not going to work because you can see it's white. Um, although it was a ping file, it's apparently not transparent. I downloaded some, some neat uh, Firefox looking icons as well. So this one will work when we change our Firefox logo. This one here will work. Here's the Windows 7 type icon I downloaded. And here's just a really neat looking Windows icon. So what we're going to do is inside of your custom menu where it says use custom icon you can click on this guy here now if you want to have just text and no icon you can just put the text in here use custom icon and leave this blank and it will give you a menu here but it will not give you any icon 
So there is a little box over here which usually shows a thumbnail of the icon. It's blank right now because I have this blank. So click on this and this will enable you to go and uh, find your folder. So like I said, I just keep these in the custom folders. That way if I wanna change computers around or something, I can quickly grab this out of my home folder and move it to another computer. And then I put any of my items here. So here we're just gonna select the one that we want. And you can see here that this adds the Apple logo. Or again, I can click on the logo, come back in, and here is the Windows. Obviously, if you're familiar with Windows 7, the real Windows 7 logo bleeds over the menu. That's not possible without doing some changes to uh, the, the theme files, uh, how, how the cinnamon theme is set up. So we're not gonna do that. Although you could do it with like the Windows 10 logo, which I didn't grab, but I grabbed this guy here online. This is a really cool looking menu. I kinda like that. And then with this type of thing, I might just wanna leave that blank. All right, so now I have my menu set up as simply this Windowsy looking icon with no text, so that will pull up my menu. And again, you can do that to any image that you want. You could do a, any type of image. Uh, if you use the transparent, uh, a ping, transparent ping file, then you'll have a little bit better um, uh, appearance considering what the rest of the menu is gonna look like. Now there's toggle buttons over here. What the toggle buttons will do is they are going to show us, uh, they are gonna show us the, some icons and other items. So show category icons. Inside your menu, this part over here is your favorites option on the far left. And then we have our category options here. And then we have our various items. So if I turn off show category items, what this is going to do is now it changes my menu so that I do not have the icons under the categories. Again, we have the application icons, which I can disable those, and which case we will, oops, did it again. In which case, now we'll have a case where everything is merely on text. So I like turning those back on. Show favorites and quit options. If we disable that box there, then we will be able to uh, you'll see that it will clear out the the favorites item over there. Now I kind of like definitely like the favorites item. I usually keep all these guys turned on because it's just a very nice uh, very nice look to it. Now bookmarks in places is down here. So here's your places over here. If you disable the places, then it's going to take that item off of the menu. It should take that item off the menu. Oh yeah, it did. There you go. There's your places there. Now enable auto scrolling in the applications list. Uh, this is what allows you to um, uh, to scroll down as you move your mouse up and down. I believe that's what that one does. If it doesn't, then yep, there it is. So now I can just move my mouse up and down and it will auto scroll through. And then we can enable file system and path entry. So up here in the search box, I can search for a program right now, but I couldn't do something like search for a, a folder option. But if I turn on the file system and path in the search entry box, now I can actually look through a folder as well and you'll see that it will go through and fill out our folder options for us. Okay, so I'm gonna disable that one. I don't use that. I just use the my computer up here if I need to do that. And then open the menu when I move my mouse over it. I definitely don't like this option, but it is the option for people who do like that, that item. I'm gonna turn that off. So I kind of keep the menu. Uh, this is essentially like the default, which works for me. So then the next thing we're gonna look at is um, how to change the overall icons. Now, I am not a huge fan of the icons in Linux Mint, and that's the only thing I really don't like about it. I just think they're, they're kind of square. To me, when I first installed Linux Mint, I loved the system, but I did not like how, how the icons to me look cut off because I really like good 3D icons. Uh, I really love the GNOME shell. 
And so to change that, you'd have to change all of your um, all of your your icons at once. And that is under your themes option. And then under your icons. Now the thing is for with me, the conflict I have is I really like the Linux Mint folders in general. But if you don't like the um, the individual icons, you can just go ahead and change the the icons over here and now you'll see if I come in here that all of the icons are a little bit different and now I actually have icons that I, I actually like these these icons a little bit better I just kinda like the and I like all the icons really but I, I like how the the Linux Mint icons uh, icons do look uh, they're just they're just nice and nice and smooth uh, these ones here I definitely don't like these looking icons um, I'm gonna have a look at what the rest of them look like though. See most of these look pretty good. I just think they they have a, a reminiscent feel kind of like the um, kind of like the Apple <laughs> when it went from iOS 6 to iOS 7 I just thought it was a, a horrible back step in how the the thing looked. It looked like a, a very nice polished machine and then they did iOS 7 and all your icons kind of went to hell. Um, so what we're going to do is maybe I'll keep these themes here uh, because some of the icons look look decent. Um, eh, maybe not. I don't like them. Let's go back to X. Um, but then I don't like my Firefox icon particularly, and that's kind of the only one I'm really going to change. So I downloaded some icons. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our menu configuration. And then what we're going to do is in the open the menu editor. So this will allow us to control the individual items that we have as well as which items are shown. So by default, if any category is blank, so in my case, education is blank, it will not show up in the list. Uh, I have no idea why my mouse keeps on clicking shut down when I just open the menu up. Um, so you'll see that education is not on my list. But I can actually force an item to not show up. So programming has one item on it. If I come in here and click on applications and I go down and find programming and disable it just by clicking the box. Now when I open up the menu here, you'll see that programming has disappeared. I'm going to turn that back on. So now you can click on each individual item and if there's a, a particular program that, that you will never use, you can actually come in here and you can, um, you can disable it just by clicking on the button here and that will make sure that the individual program will no longer load up. Okay, so now I turned off the notes. If I come under accessories, you'll find the notes will no longer show up there. All right. Now the next thing that you can do is if there is a program on your computer and you'd like it to, uh, you'd like it to be in, in a different setting, like maybe under other, let's see, what is under here? And eh, maybe screensaver. Let's turn on screensaver. Uh, ooh, let's see if I can remember how to, how to move these guys. I forgot to look in that before I started the video. Let's see. Okay, well, if I wanted this under the accessories, for example, I can turn it off from here, but under accessories, let's make sure it's not there. Okay, I can hit a new item. And then this gives me this prompt here, and then I can type in what I want to type in. Now the downside, um, what I the one, another thing that, that I'm not a huge fan of on Linux Mint is sometimes you have to do go searching for the program, which is not always an easy thing to do. Programs um, programs in Linux are generally under your user share applications, and I'm just seeing if I can find. But you know, last time I was trying these, I could not find the individual. Um, the individual files I was looking for. But I did find that in most cases if you type in the correct command here 
it will actually find that that, that is, the, is the application. So in this case here, since I'm actually just kind of copying one from a previous, and it is the screensaver, so that's not exactly a program that, that I know exactly where it is. I'm gonna come over here. I'm just gonna grab the properties over here and I'm gonna look at what the command is. Okay, so it's called Cinnamon Screensaver. So I'm actually just gonna copy that under Accessories, under New Item. Helps if I type right. Let me see if I just type it, if it should work. Oh, I just totally typed something incorrect. What did I do wrong? There you go. So you see I just manually typed it in and it gives us the, the check mark indicating that that is indeed the correct, uh, the correct, um, icon for it. So over here, the icon, uh, the icons are also generally in one spot. Let's just check here. So there's your icon section. So there's a couple places you might find the icons. Since we have changed, let's see, we're on the Linux Mint theme actually. So if I come down here, um, we might find them under here, but there's actually another spot they might be, and that's under share and picks maps is where you'll find some system resources. So there's the control center. Let's see if I can find a screensaver. Kind of, you might just have to hunt around for them. You can also use the, uh, use the, um, the default icons that we had downloaded online as well. I'm just gonna see if I can find them anywhere here. And uh, let's see, there's devices, emblems, this type of thing you might just have to have to hunt around for a little bit. You could probably also look online and see if, um, if anybody has the exact locations. Or you could just kind of pick a random, uh, a random item as well. If I don't find it soon here, I'm just going to grab a, a random item. So I actually there's, there is another option that you can do. I'm just going to pick a nice face smiley. Hey, why not? I forgot the other thing that we can do is we can just come right down to where the other one is at. Look at the properties. And then if you pull up the icon here, it will show you where it's at. Uh, so this is actually, okay, so it's Mint X Apps 96 Preferences Desktop Saver. So we're going to cancel that. We're going to come back here, find our screen saver. There it is. Preferences, and then we can change our icon right here. So let's go with Mint X Apps 96. Oh, I totally forgot the name of what that was. Actually, I like that. I think that's different than the one we, we had over there, but that is pretty good. All right, so now that is now in our list. So when I come over here under Accessories, I can see my Screensaver app is in there. So that's how to add an item. If you want to just change the icon, so like I don't like the Firefox icon, just come over here, same thing we just did. Hit properties, click on the icon. And here, what we're gonna do is just go under home, custom menu, and like I said, this one's not gonna work. In fact, let me show you what this would look like, just to show you why you might want to use a, um, why you might want to use the a transparent ping and you'll notice it does not change it on the launcher because the launcher uses its own system code no idea why my mouse keeps wanting to do that all right so here's under your internet so you'll see that it does not seem to blend in very well with the background it just kind of looks a little ugly 
Um, so, okay, I don't like that one. So let's just go back in. Let's do that again, clicking on our Firefox. We can do the dark one or we can do the Firefox on wood. Let's look at what the dark one looks like. This may not work as well with a darker theme, but let's give it a try. So there you can see what the Firefox logo looks like. It does match the coloration on the favorites menu. And then let's have a look at what the last one is. Chances are I'll probably just keep the last one that I downloaded. Which is the Firefox logo on a wooden earth it looks like. So there you can see what that one there looks like and over here. Now since we uh, since we mentioned it, changing it on the um, on the launcher menu down here, you can come over here, more, edit, and then, oh, hold on, that should not have gone right back to that one. I think it did that because I was still in the menu editing mode. Let's close that one out. Oh, okay, nope, that did work. So now it changed it on the launcher there as well. So you have to change it in, in both places. All right, uh, let's see if there's anything else in that menu that we wanted to do. Right here, I'm just gonna go back into the configure. Open menu items. And let's see, we looked at each of the individual items. We looked at how to change the icons, how to do some simple customizations, how to add various items to and show and hide various programs. So I think we pretty much covered how the menu works. Now there is another app out there which is a configurable menu and I wanted to look at that a little bit in this video as well but it appears as though it is not yet updated for Cinnamon 3. And since uh, we are on Linux Mint 18 running Cinnamon 3, um, it, it is uh, not working correctly. It's, uh, every time I downloaded it, you can work with it a little bit, but I get errors on the screen every single time I, I attempted to do something. So there's just a little bit of uh, how, to, how to make your menu work, how to change your icons around, uh, how to add, uh, add and remove uh, various programs to various different locations. And um, let me know in the comments below of other types of videos uh, I might, uh, might help you out on on getting your system configured. So anyway, this has been Tom, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.